Pastor Tara called and asked me if I would be willing to talk about why I give. And um, that surprised me because I am very new to this church, and um, but I'm not new to pledging and giving to the churches that I belong to. And I think that at the heart of why I give is the mission of the church and the ministry is to feed souls. We have so much today that focuses in on physicalness about human beings. And the spirit is where we're all in the image of God, is with our spirits. And, and so the, the church addresses that, and the pastor addresses that. And I'm going to tell a couple of stories from my experience within the church that addresses this and connects to giving. Back in the late 80s, I was married to a Methodist pastor in a small town about 100 miles from here. And um, that experience showed me what it goes on when the pastor is the one who is called. One night, late, very late at night, middle of the night, we got a call. And um, Omar answered the phone. It was either the sheriff, I don't think we had a, a town cop, so it was probably the sheriff, who said that a young man who's a, a young father and prominent in the community had been in a car accident. He fell asleep at the wheel and rolled his truck, and he died at the scene. And his parents needed Pastor Omar now. So I went with him, and the grief and the anguish for those parents was just heart-wrenching. And how that connects to giving is, how was it that a pastor was available to be called? It was because the congregation had put money together to hire him and support him and provided the housing for him. And so he was available in the middle of the night to comfort the souls of that family in a terrible, terrible time. That was important to me. That made an imprint. My second story is years later, in fact, this would have been probably 2014, um, I had retired from my career job and um, had taken the job of secretary at the Grundy Center United Methodist Church. Just starting early one morning that very first week, I got to work, got to the office early, and was hanging up pictures to make it my own. This is my office now and it's going to reflect me and so I'm, I'm very happy about that and, and the office at the Grundy Church is right on the street and the entrance is within steps of the office door. So I hear the door open and I turn around and there stands a young man and I, hello, how can I help you? And he said, well, he was just released from jail, the Grundy County Jail, the night before, and he needed help getting to Fort Dodge. I listened more. Tell me more. What's going on? What's your story? And he was the sweetest guy. He had gotten in trouble. There was a warrant out for his arrest, and he turned himself in because he wanted a new start. In Fort Dodge, waiting for him was the mother of his child. They had already lost a child, a three-year-old and he needed to get home because things were going to be okay now. He'd served his time. So um, he let me know that they had released him at 5 o'clock last the night before. He wandered around town, spent time at the laundromat, you know, just, just waiting, and he saw the lights of the church were on. That's where he knew to go. And I happened to know that the refrigerator was full of leftovers from a women's meeting the day before. I said, hey, I bet you're hungry. I let him into the kitchen. He made himself sandwiches. I called Pastor Phil, said, there's a young man here, just got out of jail and needs a ride to Fort Dodge. Can you come and talk to him? He grabbed Bob Clark on the way and <laughs> just had company for the trip. And... Um, talked to this young man and realized that he really was, this was genuine, this was genuine. Um, 
So they took him t to Fort Dodge, and Pastor Phil gave the report when he got back that the conversation was quite sincere. Um, he knew that his grandmother in Tennessee was praying for him, which le he felt led him to the church where he found help, help, found food and a ride, and that when they got to Fort Dodge, yes, there was a, a young lady waiting for him sitting on the steps who ran out to greet him. It was such a sweet story. So how does that deal with giving? That congregation put money together to pay for the lights, to pay for the staff, to pay for those things that were a resource for this individual who needed help and needed it right now. My giving would not pay anybody's salary. I don't have those kind of resources. However, I know that every dollar I give counts. And I think for everybody else, every dollar you give counts large or small, and it makes you part of where you can't yourself be in ministry, but it helps those who can be to serve and to provide and to feed the souls that we want to feed as members of our church. So I, I just encourage everyone to, that if never ever think that what you can possibly give is too small or that it's not enough. Every dollar counts. My name is Linda Kemp, and that is why I give. Perfect, because I'm going to close with that. Okay. <laughs>